welcome back to Wonder of Faith. I'm Anthony Bush, and today we'll be continuing our march through the Constitutions of the Orders. Today we'll be talking about Constitution number two, Pro Charitate Dolor, Thriving in Pain. So we're going to be focusing on pain, not so much the theodicy side, which is talking about how we can justify the goodness of God and a world filled with pain and evil. We're not going to worry about that question, but we are going to talk about the role that God and the faith plays in dealing with suffering. And so it starts out with the subtitle, To understand the value in just suffering and the growth of the soul that comes from such agony. Behold, when the time comes that the wielder looks into the face of pain, it is just and necessary to endure and not to turn away. A great grace from the Lord is calling us to dive ever deeper into his love and invitation of faith. Though the earthly effects are horrid and against every fiber of our nature, the spiritual enrichment that comes from the experience of pain is truly a deepening of self and a shareable experience in which we can take the journey of our Lord through his passion. So humans are not privy to suffering as in they do not desire suffering. We naturally want to move away from pain and that which causes us harm. But there are times in life when suffering is imminent. There is no escaping it because that is a part of the human condition. There are times when we suffer and we go through great strife. And so then the question becomes, what do we do in the face of suffering? When it, when it comes at us and there's no way around it, do we let it overtake us? Do we falter and, and let it defeat us? Or do we stand up against it and use it to make good? Because there's always the ability to make good from any, from any wrong, from any evil, from any bad. And so it is up to us to find the strength within ourselves to take what is painful, to take what is causing us great suffering, and use it to bring about good, to, in the audacity of evil, to stand and make a good from it. And so we take the example of the passion of the Lord as he suffered and walked with his crucifix, with his cross, um, through the streets and fell many times, was uh, bullied, was yelled at, was abused. He got up again and again and made his way to Calvary and willfully sacrificed his life. He accepted the suffering and he used the suffering to accomplish a greater good, which was the salvation of all. And so we, as well in our small crosses, can do the same, as we'll talk about. In sharing this, we are able to further understand the Blessed Sacrament, become empathetic to the pain of others, and turn away from the human nature that wants us to be selfish. The pains of life only strengthen what has been made to be strengthened, for it is essential for the growth and continuance of life. This is to say that we are to suffer through that pain which is necessary and not what is bizarre and devoid of value. In the mercy of our Lord, we are given those trials that cause suffering of mind, soul, or body. Such pain is a sacrifice that allows for our salvation, for every sin must be repaid and every debt collected, except that one debt of absolute death, which our Lord gave his human life without need of repayment. So it is inevitable that we also sin and cause pain to others. We are arbiters of causing suffering as well as receiving it. And so there, there is a need almost to recognize that we suffer, and it may be unjust, it may be unfair, but we remember that we also cause unjust suffering to others. And so we have to be willing to be humble and see that just as we pain others, that we also may be pained. We can't just think of ourselves and say, we alone deserve to not suffer, even when we cause suffering to others. And so um, it is the state of sin that causes suffering. It is our brokenness, our wrongful choosing that causes us to suffer most. Because sin in itself is one of its side effects. Is when we make a choice, and, and it is a sinful choice, there's always a repercussion to what we've done. We either weaken ourselves, we become depressed, we are deprived from joy and happiness and innocence. And so we have to live with the consequences of our choices. Um, but also, when it comes to salvation and understanding our place in accepting God, we have to be given a choice, right? We can't have it good all the time because that's easy, that is not a real choice. 
That is us just holding on to that which makes us feel good, that which satisfy our want of painlessness. But rather, if we go through this world filled with pain and good, evil and what is right, and we choose what is right, even when it's hard and causes us to suffer, then we are actively, willfully choosing the good of God. And there is no um, gray area because we are willing to subject ourselves to pain to do so. We are going out of our way. We are sacrificing ourselves for the good. And that is the Christian pursuit. That is what we do. Uh, and to do anything else is to satisfy selfish want. And that is to be turned away from. Because of his love, we are free. We are free to be good and decrease the pointless suffering of others in this world. If we aid in bearing the burden, then we can flourish ever more and bring this world ever closer to the truth that is what that it was meant to know, the gospel message. So we see people suffering in pain, and they're kind of stuck with it. They don't know any other way. But if we go to them and do what God has told us to do, to show them joy, to show them good, and to... To be compassionate and giving of ourselves. They can see what Christianity and the faith really is through our practice and come to know the joy themselves and stop suffering in their state of mind. Execution. In this world, we must aid those in suffering and bring to them the message of love that will allow them to endure. We must be willing to sacrifice out of empathy and feel the pain that strikes others in order for us to truly help the world. What is the meaning of personal giving if there is no understanding of its value? Every act is to be one of self-giving that does not focus on the worldly benefit of self, but the endless benefit of all. So if we want to alleviate suffering, we have to plan our action so it is oriented toward the other, not ourselves. We can't just worry about what we need or what we want, but we always have to keep in mind what others need and want, especially those we love and care about. And so we become an example. And we don't just do things to do things. We have a reason behind them. There is a rational understanding of our actions and how they are all connected to a whole or a huge vision that they all become a part of. It's holistic. It's unitive. And so we have to not just be spontaneous or just act in a non-pattern way, but have a moral understanding and live accordingly so that we can fight against unnecessary suffering because that is the painful reality of the world. The suffering is unnecessary. Some people suffer necessarily, whether it's to help someone and they choose that, but some don't. So to be there and to try our hardest to alleviate that is one of the many things we do as children of God and as to be truly human and good. Suffering plays the role of empowering our selfless acts and giving us a conduit of grace that allows us to continue on. It is known that the Lord never gives more than the soul can handle with his aid. In this truth, we are always able to call on the Father for the ability to stand strong and to persevere in the face of defeat. We are called to act as Christ did, despite the discomfort and risk of shun. Nothing is greater than the laying down of life for one's friend. John chapter 15, verse 13. Our baptism gives us the potential to reach that level of love for God. We are called each day to go forth ever onward toward heaven. Let it be known. So, to make good from the bad, to have a hurricane come through, or... Um, uh, a breakout of a disease and you see suffering and death and pain but what comes after there comes a period of unity of community of help of aid of vulnerability and it reveals the true human condition that exists under all of the surfaces that we put up on the day-to-day -day. we see actual care and action for the other and that's when the humanity is at its best when it undergoes great suffering, and then combats it, fights against it, and refuses to give in to it. So that is what suffering is. It is to allow us to know the value of the good. For if good alone existed, we would not know what it is, because there is no evil to contrast it to. But because we know what evil is and how dark the world can be, we can look to the light and appreciate its brightness evermore. And that's what we have to do. We have to look only to what is good and what is right and bask in the light so that we can put down evil and suffering and minimize it. 
and help those who cannot help themselves. Finally, onward, let it be known that from these lessons and revelations, this Constitution does decree, one, pain is to be avoided if it is unhealthy and without purpose. So we don't afflict pain on ourselves if it's unnecessary. We don't um, lash ourselves. You know, that's been a tradition in the past of the church to like to be like Jesus, we are to cut or to hurt ourselves. And that is causing damage to the body that is unnecessary. And therefore, it is not acceptable because we are to remember that we are good and that to harm ourselves willfully is bad for any reason, unless it is to help someone else or to help ourselves. Number two, pain is never to be avoided if it is the case that it would transfer harm to another. So we have to be courageous enough to remember that we do not put pain on others to save ourselves. That is the definition of cowardice. That is the definition of being a base and rejecting the human dignity of yourself. We must always put the other first. And therefore, if pain comes our way, we do not push it on someone else, but we take it and we make what we can of it with God's help. Number three, empathy shall be practiced as to understand the suffering of others. So it's not enough to just live your own life and be blind to what others go through, but to see what others suffer with and to be there with them and give of yourself. That is what you're called to do. That is what will make you happy and whole. So it is good that we are uh, emp empathetic and have that ability and, and try to get better at it so that we can be more helpful and more giving of ourselves. Number four. Pain is found not only in the physical, but also in the spiritual and mental. So it's easy to just um, talk about like poverty or physical element like someone having a bruise or a cut. But there is also spiritual, emotional, and psychological pain. And those types of pains many times are more perpetual. That They go on longer and they don't leave. And these existential pains are serious, and it's an epidemic. We have too much of this in the modern world because the joy is not known. Faith is not instilled. And so we have to do our part to speak up, to be caring, to give of ourselves, and not just physically, but also spiritually, and be there for those who need help, who need support, and are just asking for a friend or for someone to listen to them. And so we have to be able to play that part, even if it's hard for us. We have to be willing to listen and give what we can to people. And number five, give all pain up to the Lord. Never let suffering go without meaning. Always give it to God and allow God to make you better through it. Because if you can't avoid it, you might as well make the most of it. I mean, what else is there to do? You cannot quit. We are not quitters as human beings. We are not ones to give up and let the world take us and defeat us. No. We stand strong, and so we take the pain, and we give it to God who can make the most of it. If only we let him and we have faith. Those without faith, they suffer and they don't see what to do with it because they don't have that capacity. But we know, those of you who are with me in this faith, know that pain when given as a prayer to God, becomes powerful, becomes good, even if it was horrible at the beginning. And so we must remember always that no matter what pain we go through, with God we can persevere and we can use it to make something better. Finally, the verse of the Constitution. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. So, Pain is to be made meaningful, and it is to make us stronger. And with the help of God, we can do all of these things, if only we give him a chance. So don't fear pain, but accept it for when it comes, and use it to make better yourself and everyone around you. May you find final victory in Christ, and may God be with you and bless you.